Hello, this is Bill Shed here, and today we are review. We are going to take a look at old school Ubuntu, and by old school, I mean Ubuntu 4.10, but aka Ubuntu Warty Warthog, which came out back in, I believe, October of 2004, which is, and I'm serious, a year before I was born. Not, not exactly a year, but almost a year before I was born but yeah let's get to look hang a look at it so when it so when you first boot the ISO up it basically gives you this press F1 for help or press enter to boot I'm just gonna press enter to boot and it's gonna give us some geek stuff right here and then yep so now it gives you these as your options. Your choice of language also affects the default locale, blah, 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 your, your basic stuff. Often. Yeah. So of course, you know, I'm picking English. I don't speak French. I may know little, but I don't speak the whole thing. Picking United States, American English. Now it's, and back in the day, this dang thing did not have SATA support, so you, you can't even run this on modern hardware anymore. <laughs> so I, I thought that just needed to be pointed out overall. So let's just pick that as our default host name, which is basically an Eric computer. Right here it says you want to partition your disks. So it gives us an option we can manually partition the table or we can just nuke the entire disk, which is what I'm going to do. Call me Kim Jong-un because that's what's about to happen to this. And back in the day, there was no EXT4 from the looks of it. There was EXT3, but not EXT4. So, yep, get the nuking. So yeah. So it does that stuff and... Now it's just on the Ubuntu base system and because I'm basically running this in a virtual machine which is running a modern hardware, it, it should not even take that long anyway. It's like It's faster than it's faster than a, than a scripted arch install basically. It's faster than a scripted arch install on gigabit internet. Let's just say it like that, okay? <laughs> which I thought was the fastest you could go. I was told otherwise by this so yeah so copy remaining packages to hard disk so now it's just on the grub bootloader and now it's telling us the first stage of installation is complete there we press enter that's gonna boot up again that's for booting to quote unquote booting into a new system. Let's press escape, boot to the hard disk now. That's booting into Ubuntu, specifically version 2.6.8.1. And yeah. So now you got this. So I forgot to mention. This version of Ubuntu, first very first version, didn't even have a graphical install, which it was common back then for Linux not to even have a graphical install. And yeah, but Linux but Ubuntu was still very easy to install. Anyways, easier to install than Debian. In fact, if I'm go going to be completely honest here. Which, yeah. But one of the bigger changes I think needs to be mentioned is that that user creation stuff was done post install on Ubuntu. So yeah. So let's select central for time zone. Configure password. I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> it 
Enter a full name for the new user. Let's select Builder Shed. Enter a username for your account. Let's pick Builder Shed. Again. Again. You know, I'll change all my passwords after this. So now it's going to download all the software packages and stuff, so yeah. And geez, it's only taking us like five minutes already for this whole thing so yeah so I'll be back in a second when it, when it prompts me again well I'm going to go in live and I'm just going to get to cut okay or not yet <laughs> it's all like not yet it's VGA for this baby but yeah, now let's get to it. Be back in a sec, peeps. So yeah, I'm back in. Looks like the base config system configuration is installed, and yeah, we don't speak of what happened earlier. <laughs> yup, I added the old and in live, but yep, we're good now. But yep, so let's press OK. Well, let's read it first. Thank you for choosing Ubuntu. Set up of your Ubuntu. System is complete. You may now you may now log in. If you want to revisit this setup process at a later date, just run the base config program. Okay, let's just click OK and now we're in a situation. Well. Module loader present. Jeez. Yes, I want the detail up. Okay, let's just do not caps log. Log in. Deal with this. I don't think system CTL was a thing back then, but okay. Wait, CCTL start. That, that's <laughs> yeah. Those were not thing back in the day. Yep. So start X. Okay. No screens found. Seems to be like it seems to be an issue. Screens found. Um, so yeah, I'll get back to this once I somehow find a way to fix this, okay? I'll be back in a sec. So I'm back, and it looks like. So, what I did here was that I switched to VirtualBox for this one temporarily, so, yep. Don't don't mind the cursor just being the, the the second cursor. That's just I do not know how to deal with that one right now. That's just a weird but weirdo right there. But yeah, let's just get it on there. It, it's just going to take doing that. Okay, so I'll pay attention to the white cursor for now. Okay, so yeah. So, y'all were probably looking at this and be thinking, did it use Mate back in the day? No, it did not use Mate back in the day. It used GNOME, and specifically an older version of GNOME. GNOME 2.0 to be specifically, which is what Mate is based on. 
His version of Gnome was a lot more customizable, I believe. In fact, we could add more panels, like we can add a panel over here. I believe if we wanted to, we could just make this a lot, lot more like Windows if we wanted. But yeah, or make it a lot more like Unity too, like that. There's nothing to prevent us from doing that. But yeah. So we had our workspaces, we have our workspaces down here. Like a little demonstration, we have a terminal right here. Let's just have a terminal, and then on this one, we just pop them in old school Firefox. On this one, we just pop open, um, I don't know, I'm. Synaptic. Now, of course, this is old school Synaptic, but it's still practically the same software. And then we just pop open um, um something like um. Let's just pick. The root terminal. So yeah, we basically have those right here. So yeah. <laughs> um yeah of course so basically those were the Linux has had, has had workspaces for a very long time if y'all know so I just mentioned that so yeah many of your modern features like this up here your volume switcher just turn the volume up and down date you can get some help with GNOME We also got stuff like um, terminal server client. Don't know what that one is. We got old school GIMP. Got some old school games. Wow. Yep. And of course, we got that. And of course, we all know we, I gotta go deeper than this. So, if y'all didn't know, back in the day, you didn't have like apt was actually two different commands. It was not apt. It was not that. You could do apt search. You can do apt install. And do apt get install if you wanted to search you couldn't do apt get search that'd be an invalid operation you had to do apt cache search let's just do kde and by the way yes you could still even back then you were still able to do like search via without being root so yeah, I thought I'd just bring that out there. Bash is my shell. I'm just half brainless right now, but yep. So y'all may be wondering, okay, from what we've had VI back then, so yeah. So what if I wanted to install packages from the archive or pause for something? So yeah, do sudo su su VI, or didn't have nano. Okay, that nano. Apps, sources.list. And I'm going to have to look it up for a sec. And then just...
So yeah. Here's right here. So what we want to do is we want to go down here and we want to learn that. From dev http old releases dot ubuntu dot com slash ubuntu slash and then Lordy and then main restricted universe multiverse Same thing down here. Ubuntu or T updates. Main restricted universe multiverse. Gonna do it again. Deb. Yes. No. I think I just do that. Yes, I just. I do see apt get update. I think it's trying to connect to those. Yep. I think I find something related to about here. No, geez, you stupid. You just gotta dig eyes so they can help me out here. Is there a spelling error? Can I do ping? No, not not there. Here. HTTP slash old dash R E L E A S E S dot Ubuntu com slash Ubuntu Warty Yeah, 
I think that should be okay. I don't know what the heck. Oh, I see. Yeah, I was much of a hard time trying to connect now. Yeah, it's being used by you. Now that, now you can actually start installing packages. And there's one thing we all know it does not have at this point. There ain't no way on earth that has that. Let's be real here. <laughs> it's so bad that distros went by that. But what Ubuntu did was that it tried to make things easier for the normal user. Like, it's in system tools, like system log, like all of these, like basic stuff, okay? Okay, configuration editor, blah, blah, blah. And then you had um, stuff like this, Desk desktop preferences. You got some theme, you can change the theme. You got human, you put boot your theme. You need gradients with teal highlights. Jeez, that's my favorite. Default. Glider, Grand Canyon, Industrial, blah, blah, blah. I need to stop getting distracted. Simple. Yeah, and. Probably go with. I'm go with that one. Of There's some down here too. I know dang well y'all are gonna be waltzing into Synaptic. There is no way y'all ain't. That's one of the things they put on here to make it easier. Like, like back then they didn't have a full on update manager for y'all. As far as I can find, okay? Like, I don't see an updater. I don't see anything like that right here. There has to be more than the GNOME desktop environment, though. There has to be more. Hold on. Hold on. there I guess geez well, I guess we can find those probably oh a desktop environment So, when you're looking at older distribution, one thing you gotta do is you gotta look for the old stuff. The old school stuff. I mean, stuff you haven't and not even heard of in ages, okay? So, when you search for CDM. Nope. Not in existence. 
Good for old KDE. What was the W other thing? No. TW. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> Alright, go that for him. KDE. So we got KDE right here. The K desktop right here. Oh, yep. Le Collection. Let's get all that on here. Voila. Apply. And now it's applying all that stuff. So now we're put throwing KDE on this thing. Well, what would you say if we started doing some customization of GNOME? Which was something that was a lot, which was more like Mate than it was anything back in the day. So, let's get to it. So, first, we nuke a panel. Second, I could, we create a panel. Two, we nuke a panel. Create a new panel. We nuke this panel. Let's get to adding. What do you want to throw on here? So let me see. We got that. Let's remove that garbage from the panel. Hold on. It's already turned to a pain in the rear. Screw you, get out of here. Add to panel, let's add. The known menu. Right there, let's just move you over here. Isn't that where start? Isn't that where start mini belongs? Yeah. And we got we got to add more to the panel. We can't just forget. <laughs> so what do what do we need now? We need a. Switch between the open windows. And we got that down there. Now what I want to do is we want to throw in a clock somewhere. Get that clock, you're violating the crime. Clock goes over there. I'm gonna sell the basic Windows menu. Um, and we still cannot forget any more. Workspace switcher, get over there. There has to be something though. Add the panel. There has to be. More. And then we just got it now. Then we just got to add a what is it? He's a fish in there, jeez. That just makes everything more fishy. St 
stock ticker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, people want to look at stocks. And then. Where's the volume thing? Yeah, here it is. We move you over here. I think the appropriate thing though now will be to go into properties and just shrink this sucker. Obviously way too big for its own good. Grab the size 30 and then we're good. So yeah, now we got KDE on this thing. <laughs> Can we find a new shell? SH is its own. CSH? Ooh, we got CSH on here. You know what that means? <laughs> Yeah, we basically just windows this thing thing. We just made this thing look like half half like windows. System tools. Change the background um We should find someone on Google. I am going to be surprised. If Google can be loaded up on anything. Like, you could even load Google up on Internet Explorer. Okay? Now, my Internet Explorer, I mean, like, 1990s Internet Explorer. Like, old school internet explorer you can load google up on anything that thing's designed to be ran ran on anything okay okay you, you are stuck like yeah it, it it opens up on here let's just search for um like going to linux wallpaper Go into images. Yeah, I think they're quite good here, though. We log out of this. I guess we could change the desktop environment, though. Go into session. Choose KDE. Just for the session. Now we got K personalizer. Choose what preferred system for behavior. Let's just go with um Windows. Speedy main. Redmond, Platinum, Ceramic, KD Classic. Go with Ceramic. Finished. So here's old KDE, what it looked like back in the day.
that old Conqueror and stuff like that. You had the old collection back in the day. And to be honest, I think it's about time to conclude this. So I think many of you are probably wondering, what are my overall thoughts about old school Ubuntu? I'll be honest, it was a very interesting experience to go through. I've had a little experience with this bef before, just screwing around with it a little, but I thought it was definitely a very interesting video idea for y'all to definitely see someone who, a, a newer Linux user who just started using Linux the last few years, like the last couple years, try out a very old, ver like an old version of Linux from like even a year before I was born. Like a version of Linux from 2004. So, yeah. And you know, I think I think about doing more videos like this. Maybe do one over Debian. I mean, like, you want to see one about Debian? Just say so in the comments. I'll get that one going too. So, yeah. It was definitely a ride there. This is Bill Shed. See y'all next time. See ya.